My name is Sam. I make Hornets videos. This is a Hornets fan channel. I also do a podcast with Raymond Felton. Link in the description is called Believe in Hornets. And man, the draft is over with. We went into tonight. I'm recording this after the draft. Like I legitimately just finished streaming 10 minutes ago. Now I'm recording this and then I'm going to bed. All right, let's get into it though. Hornets went into tonight with three picks. 13, 15, 45. 13 came around. Unbelievably. Jalen Duran was there. They draft Jalen Duran. They trade Jalen Duran. Weird. 15th pick comes around. Mark Williams is there. Mark Williams selected. Two thumbs up. Second round comes around. Hornets had the 45th pick. They're like, nah, we're going up. Went up five spots. Traded with the Timberwolves to select Bryce McGowans from Nebraska. I like what I see. It's a second round pick. Hornets have a strong history lately with second round picks. So, hey, we not mad at it, but let's let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's go to the 13th pick with the 13th overall pick. Jalen Durin chilling, big chilling, sitting in the Hornets hands. Hornets draft him and they trade him to New York and then New York trades him to Detroit along with Kemba Walker real quick on Kemba. He's going to get bought out. I wouldn't hate Kemba being brought back to Charlotte as a backup point guard at the veteran minimum. Could be interesting to follow, like an interesting narrative piece to follow going into the offseason and next year. We'll see. We'll see how much Kemba has left in the tank. But beyond that, Duren bounces around, ends up in Detroit with Jaden Ivey and Cade Cunningham. Madness. Detroit might be out of the eight and race, so they may throw a ton of money at Miles Bridges. The, the implications of all this is crazy. We'll, We'll see. We'll see what happens. But for the Hornets, right? Duren in their hands. Send him out of town. What do you do? Why do you do it? Well, I think first off, Cupcheck said it best. They don't need any more rookies. Plainly. JT Thor, Kai Jones, James Booknight, all young players they want to see a lot from this year. There's only so many minutes to be given out. Continuing their development's important. Something that's also seemingly important is keeping the cap number low. Adding a lottery pick along with the 15th pick to this cap situation this didn't seem like something this this organization was wanting to do. So what they did was basically defer, right? With the best deal I think they think they could have gotten, which is this 2023 first round pick from Denver. That pick is gonna suck. It's gonna be late in the it's gonna be late. <laughs> late, late, late. Denver's gonna get healthy next year. Uh Murray, Porter. Jokic is Jokic, you know, Aaron Gordon, like Denver's going to be good next year. Very low expectations for this pick, right? Then they get a ton of second round picks. This pick from the Knicks, this pick from the Jazz, and then the better of Dallas and Miami's second round pick. They'll, at this stage, with their own and this, they'll have four second round picks next year. You don't need that many picks in the second round. That's too many. And then a 2024 second round pick from New York. That's a lot of second rounders. A lot of second rounders, man. And so when, I, when this is happening and you see these, these, these deals get announced, my thought is like, all right, well, you acquire these to send them out. There's no reason. I'm, there's no way they use these picks. And was, as we saw what happens with this one later, that this one went out later in the night, but the Denver pick, could be interesting you know if this hornets team is good next year next year's pick is top 16 protected the kai jones pick from last year's draft and after that it's lottery protected if this team is good as that's the plan right that's the goal if they're good enough they won't the hornets won't have a first round draft pick next year so having some representation in next year's draft even if it's a low pick is important that matters if you want to trade it Package it with the Hayward contract, with the Terry contract, with an Ubre or Plumley contract. It's available. You can move it. Same with these. Have, having Jalen Duran, like <laughs> they're here, and sending him out of town. You know the majority, the consensus best center um, in that range, not including Chet, I guess. And sending him out for this does seem underwhelming, but. We'll see what, he, what happens with it. A lot of potential here. As far as grades go, with that 13th pick, 
it's an incomplete. We don't know. <clears throat> we don't know what's going to happen with these picks. So shouts to James Plowright. Mark Williams was, according to Mitch, their top ranked big out of the three, assuming Duran and Sochan were the others, which, by the way, I was not happy that Sochan went so soon. I was like, oh man, I thought he was in play. Didn't happen. Feels bad. And then with Williams, like they clearly liked him. You know, they, they brought him in. They've had a close up look with Williams. They've, they've spoken with him. They worked him out. So if Williams is your guy, and you feel like Duran has the best trade value at the point. You take best player available, flip them for some future stuff that you can maybe flip for another time. You know, that 13th pick, I got to give an incomplete grade. But in the grand scheme, getting the guy you wanted all along at 15 makes a lot of sense. So for the first round, I, th I think it's a solid B grade for the Hornets. Given what we don't know, what, what, the, what the future holds with those picks, what more deals they have in mind or hope to pull off. They don't unnecessarily add to the salary cap when that not, is not their goal, right? The goal is to keep things moderately low heading into this summer with Miles Bridges contract coming, Cody Martin contract coming. We'll see. And they get the guy they wanted all along, who I think has a ton of upside, you know, he said it himself, Robert Williams is who he compares himself to. Watching these finals, it's hard not to watch these those, those NBA finals and be like, damn, I wish we had Robert Williams on our team. Like, this is insane. Williams boasts a 7'6 wingspan and a 9'9 standing reach, both of which the largest measurements of any player in this year's draft. His wingspan could be the seventh widest of active NBA players this season. Uh, beyond that, he could offer a ton defensively on the glass, on the rim runs, and he's, he believes he can develop a jumper as he plays in the NBA, as he continues to develop in the NBA. When you so you look at the Robert Williams comps, like he's not gonna be that good immediately. But if you can offer an ounce of that off rip, him, Kai Jones, JT Thor, PJ Washington, Miles Bridges, that is a really athletic set to be pulling from. Whoever our new coaches will have some toys to play with in different sets, in different looks. We'll see what happens with Plumley. You know, they 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 pull the trigger on his on his deal. It's fully guaranteed now. I still I'm still convinced he's where he remains and starts the season as the starting center um, because he's a veteran. And I think eventually he'll be phased out, and Mark Williams will be phased in. Uh, I don't know if it's fair for him to start, be pushed right into the starting lineup right away. Maybe he's ready. Who knows? Maybe he kills in the summer league and he's ready to go off rip. That'd be amazing. But I think it's unlikely, right? I think we're still locked in for, with Plumlee as our starter and eventually seeing Mark Williams brought on, getting more and more minutes as the season goes on. The other player we got out of the draft, Bryce McGowans from Nebraska. We traded up from 45 to 40 to select him. And one of the brand new picks we got from the 13th pick from the Durban trade, the Knicks 23 second round pick, you know, this one right here was immediately sent back out to Minnesota for McGowan's. So now we're just left with from the 13th pick, this one, the Denver pick, the Utah pick, the Dallas or Miami pick, and then the other Knicks pick. So with Bryce here in the second round, he's a ways away. From what I can tell, from what I've read, you know, he's not going to offer much defensively. He has a good frame about him. He's a scorer. Not a lot to offer athletically. He is a good athlete, but he's a project, right? Um, he has the potential to grow into something really nice, especially from a shooting point of view. Um, and I think, you know, being in this Hornet system with a track record with second round picks is a good place to be, right? Under this regime, this Mitch Kupchak regime. We're talking Devontae Graham, we're talking Jalen McDaniels, Cody Martin, um, JT Thor most recently, Nick Richards before that. The second round has been moderately successful, you know, uh, for what you would expect from the second round. And Bryce McGowan's, I'm sure we'll spend a lot of time in Greensboro this year, you know, um, getting up shots, <laughs> getting up a ton of shots um, in Greensboro and fair play. We'll see what he can turn into, but the pick makes sense. He's a big wing who can score. Uh, can't play much defense. Sounds familiar. He sounds like a Hornet, doesn't he? So all in all, you know, with Williams, with McGowan's, and with whatever happens with those picks we got for Duran, 
it's a B. All things considered, it's a B. You know, if um, if we, they took Abaji with the 13th pick and then Williams with the 15th pick, probably a B plus because we know what we have. You know, maybe an A minus because it's a it's, as far as we can know about a draft pick. Well, there's still I think another move coming, and so because of that, because of the incomplete nature of it, I got to give it a B, which I think is pretty good. And alone, the Mark Williams pick, I think is an A. I just the incompleteness of the other stuff, the question marks about the other stuff, those draft picks that we got for the 13th pick for Dern brings it down to a B, which I think is fair. But what do you think? How would you grade this year's draft for the Hornets? What do you want to see them do with those extra picks from the Duran trade? Let me know in the comments. You can tweet them at me, send me a message on Instagram, whatever. I'm pretty available. My Discord is in the description if you want to get in the conversation over there. But man, I'll be talking about um, this for a while. Uh, probably make another video in a couple of days looking at the total free agent situation now that we know what the draft, how the draft shook out. Um, hopefully we get a coach here soon. Fingers crossed. Hoping for Dan Tony. We'll see what happens though. No Steve Clifford. No. Mark Stein needs to relax. He started with the Westbrook stuff and now this Clifford stuff. Mark Stein, is, I think he has it out for us, Hornets fans. On the low. I like Mark Stein. I like Mark Stein too. I don't know why he keeps coming after us. It's very weird. Like, allow it, man. It's, we're just trying to trying to live our life here as, as Hornets fans. Been through enough, right? Been through enough. But anyway, I've been Sam. You've been great. See you next time. Peace.